tree. We're going to San Quentin in hopes that there's a Thanksgiving holiday for my friend Ben Mo. He's paroling today. I was incarcerated for him for about five years. This is the backside of the prison where I sneak up and get people. Turn left onto Main Street, then your destination will be on the right. Dealing with immigration, we don't know what the outcome is. Once he is in their custody, it's hard. It's, you don't know if they're going to put him on a plane, go back to Vietnam. I was told not to go on prison grounds. The risk is um, ICE even coming to get me if, if, if uh, somebody calls on me. It's 6.15 now. They should be coming. If they're going to get a mission, coming pretty soon. The worst case scenario is they detain them and they'll come out this way. We'll, we'll put up signs letting Ben know that he got supports out here. In 1975, my country was taken over by the communist Khmer Rouge after the Vietnam War. I was born in 1979 on the border of Cambodia and Thailand. When I was about four, my family decided to run the border and try to make it to the refugee camp in Thailand. When we came here, we came here with nothing. So we started with nothing. We moved to a poor part of LA right by Dodger Stadium and I started school. It was hard. We were on welfare, Medicare. In the 80s, 90s, it was dangerous for a teenager, especially a person of color, the neighborhood we lived in. It, it was a war zone. I was illiterate. I couldn't find a job. Um, I, ha I have a kid and another one on the way. And all I knew was the street life. When I was arrested, I was like, okay, I'm a lookout. I'll probably end up doing no more than five years. All of a sudden, it's like, you're facing almost 50 years. I was like, ha, ha, what, ha, what? I don't understand what you're telling me. And nobody was physically harmed. They just threw my life away. I started changing slowly. It took me about 13 years to really change the way I thought, change the way I behaved. And it, it took a lot of studying and understanding myself. I was given a chance to go to the parole board in February, 2020. It was, it was a long time coming. It was a dream come true. I was so, I was so happy I was numb. But knowing I got freedom from CDCR, the reality of an ice hole hits me. Like, you're not free yet. You're going to a detention center. I'm free, but I'm going to be locked up again. My mom can comprehend that. She's like, what do you mean you're free? I was like, well, they're going to let me out of prison, but immigration is going to hold me. She's like, but you did your time. You did 23 years. I was like, I know, mom, but it's just the law. When we first heard of COVID from the news, we knew that it's gonna hit San Quentin. It's not how it's gonna hit it, it's when it's gonna hit it. If you had COVID or you reported that you had COVID, they were locking you up in solitary. I still think that I was gonna pick me up. So I'm stressed, like what am I doing? I have no phone call. They shut off all the phone because of COVID. I'm looking for an ICE agent to come in with paperwork to pick me up. I don't see none. Eight, nine o'clock come, I don't see none. He said, you're going to uh, the bus station. I was like, for real? Like, yeah. And I play off like, okay, cool. But I'm like, is ICE gonna pick me in the front? Are they tricking me? What are they doing? I go to the front gate and they stop the car and they're like, are you sure he's supposed to come out? The officers haven't 
argument about paperwork and I'm sitting there, oh, they caught me right at the gate. I can't believe I made it to the gate and they caught me. He said, you know what, I don't care what he's saying. I'm gonna drop him off when we come back, we'll do the paperwork. I'm like, yes, please do that. The last time I seen my sister, I believe it was 2011. Ah, Cory Coco. Oh. Are you ready to be surrounded by all your sisters and your mom? You're the only boy. I know. I've been thinking about that. I think I am. I haven't seen my mom since 98, I believe. Last time was behind glass. No. Oh, mom is here. I consider myself Cambodian American. I still hold on to my roots, my ancestors, and my tradition, but I've never lived a Cambodian life. I'm a foreigner in that country. I don't know how to read or write, and I believe my Cambodian is not even strong enough over there. I don't know if I could make it there because it's so limited for me. And if I was to be deported there, uh, I'd leave my family behind. I want to help because uh, I know what, what these families are, are going through, and a lot of these guys are my friends. The best case scenario is uh, they, they don't pick them up. Right, oh, they go a white van right there. Let's see if it's turning in. It is turning in, look, right there. There's a white van right there. That, that's the van they come in. If you guys want to stop by and visit, we'll, we'll uh, Okay. okay. Thank you. Can you tell Gonzo that? He sees a sign that you okay. want to hog, but I can't, can't do that. Yeah. Let you guys know. 6.30 Street, okay? They're bringing um, bin Vo to the ICE Detention um, Processing Center in San Francisco right now. A lot of us from Southeast Asia go through a lot of trauma about family separation. You know, we have family member that passed away and never heard of from again. Some family that went missing during the war. It's the same trauma that comes back up when we're detained. I live every day with fear, but I don't want to allow that to stop me from enjoying my family, enjoying my freedom, enjoying my second chance. Ha <laughs> ha 